Here. Bill. Al. Here. If I miss anybody? Did <coughs> you say Ann? I'm sorry. <coughs> Suggest us um, shoot down the item eight letter B because. Uh, so, yeah, we just printed out our application schedule for everybody. It's basically, well, for, I'll stop for you, Creek. Um, basically, the same as it has been in the years past. We're going to start uh, the last week of March and do our verification there. We're, we're just going to solid time the greens. There hasn't been any play hardly since, you know. October was a little busy, November, December, February, all that hasn't had any play. So we're just gonna solid time just try to get down low and just sort of break up that stuff down deep. It's really helped in the last couple of years with the low price dry spot. Those little dry marks that you see around the greens, we've been able to really cut back on those the last few years. So I think that's a big part of it, is getting down deep and loosening that stuff up before or down there. It hadn't been hadn't been done in, you know, the so many years before the last two or three. So Things help, and then we'll just go, you know, monthly with our solid times, little needle times, poke little holes in there, and pretty much good to go the next next day, next afternoon or something. And then we'll do teas in the spring, teas in the fall. We'll probably get out new approaches in the spring with pulling cores out of those, and then we'll get around and clean up clean up those. And, and then roughs and round bunkers are just year round with the area machine. Just try to slice it. And, Try to get fairways as much as you can. Those are a little harder and the machine's slow and you got a lot of acres of fairways out there. So, <laughs> so but yeah, we'll plug away at it and then we'll go and get into fall. We're still kind of debating. It's either going to be the last week of September or the first week of October. Just we're trying to figure out a few tournaments and then we need to work around those two themselves. So, <laughs> same thing in the in the fall. We'll just probably solve the time, maybe pull the little tiny cores again, but it will be about the same as the spring. A lot of sand. The geese have really done a number on number 12 this year, so we got to fill in some, some holes there. So we get a lot of sand on the greens in the spring. Any questions? Brian's going to talk about some geese. He's going to talk about verification for yeah, peaks. So I'll do the sunset. Twin Peaks and Sunset verification <laughs> schedule. So I'll start with uh, Sunset, and then ladies were in the packets. Of Everyone printed out the entire sheet, but um, so Twin Peaks and Sunset are going to be doing a very similar uh, aeration <coughs> schedule this year, starting towards the end of March, middle of March, depending on what the weather looks like. We'll start out with our fairways and roughs, getting out there and trying to make some holes, reduce some compaction. Last year, we were at both courses, we were successfully able to aerate all the greens, all the tees, all the surrounds, and all of the fairways, which has been a couple of years since we've been able to get it all done. So this year, we're gonna go after it again and try to get them all done again in the spring and the fall. But as far as the greens go, we'll start out on April 5th in sunset, weather permitting doing the full course aeration and we're going to go with hollow times, just a small um, half inch, just under half inch <clears throat> ivy, so just you know, about the size of my pin, um, fill it up with sand, put some fertilizer down. Same thing at uh, Twin Peaks in the spring, we'll be going the week after on April 11th. Uh, due to, we noticed over the past year there hasn't been as good a percolation and filtration of the greens at Twin Peaks and Sunset. So this year the goal is to open them up and get as much fresh sand in them as we can to reduce some of the black layer that's been uh, growing over the year through last year with all the play we had. I believe I discussed some about it last year when I did my course presentations. So this year we're going to be attacking that and then once a month Throughout the summer, we'll be using the needle times like um, you Creek does to uh, open up the greens to get some air flowing through them. Just the ones that will be healed up by the next day. During this uh, fall, we'll be doing a full course aeration on September 13th for sunset, which is a week later than usual, just because it falls 
individual day falls on the same week as Labor Day, and it's already a short week, so we don't want to make it any shorter than we need to. You know, give the course some more time to heal up. And then also, the day before, on September 12th, we'll be going at Twin Peaks, and that day we'll be going, we'll be opening up to tea times at 2.30 in the afternoon, which reminds me, so at sunset we'll be closed all day because we have the cross country meet. So we're just doing solid times in the fall, which will be closed all day for the cross country meet. But Twin Peaks will be using the same times, but we'll be opening later that afternoon because we won't be doing as big an impact to the greens. It'll just be a few holes, a little bit of sand and some fertilizer. So and then we'll do the same thing in the fall, trying to get BPs, fairways, and roughs buried and also to get ready for the winter. And yeah, that's the aeration plan for all three courses this year. Now we just need the weather to cooperate with us. <laughs> and, yeah. Any questions? <clears throat> so yeah, let's do frost. Okay. Jim, and so we started at the bottom of the agenda, not knowing if uh, other board members were going to come, so we didn't even reorder. Just I apologize for talking to you. this race between meetings. All right. Thanks again. Okay, so we're going to do a little presentation on frost and kind of what causes frost and the reasons we do what we do to keep golfers off of the course during frost. Um, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the exact science behind it. I found a pretty good article that really dumbs it down for people like me who are not a scientist and can't, uh, can't explain the in-depths of it. So, so I just put out some slides and we'll just kind of go through them and if you guys have any questions, we'll try to answer the best we can. If not, we'll Google it. So. <laughs> so where does frost come from? It's formed by dew that forms on the planet at night when there is no solar energy to replace radiation at night. As the leaf cools, then the water, it, the leaf plant isn't able to hold the water, so it comes outside of the plant and forms on the leaf blade. So this causes the water to appear, and then when the temperatures drop low enough, it'll turn into frost. Most of the water vapor comes from the soil, and when it's wet and the air is dry, this helps to drive the moisture up through the grass. So when you have you know, moisture in the soil, then it comes up through the plant and it comes on the outside, and then when it gets cold enough, then it starts to form frost. So, um, why does frost form when air temperature is above freezing? So this again has to do with the infrared radiation, you know, no sunlight. Um, at night, the earth emits heat into space and the sun isn't there to replace it and cools the surface. Since cooler air is more dense, it remains closer to the grass, you know, so it's a lot cooler down right at the grass blades than it is, you know, way up here. So um, as, it more, as it goes, it, it pushes that colder air down. So that's what helps, um, you know, get the frost. Your air temperature, I think I have it in the next Friday, but their air temperatures that they take out of you know airports or your thermometers wherever you go are always taken way up high and so it's a lot cooler down at grass level and stuff like that so that's why we we get uh, you know eventually the air will cool to the frost point and frost will <clears throat> form because the air cannot hold as much water and then the frost will form so the longer nighttime periods in the spring and fall you get more cooling since there's more time to to, for that to lose energy, you know, that's kind of obvious, you know, makes pretty much sense, you know, the longer it's colder, you know, the, the more chance you have of frost, and as we get into the fall, then, you know, temperatures are lower, and that's why it's hard for us to decide when we want to water in the fall, because we know we're going to make frost, we're going to make ice, but we want to get the golfers started too, but sometimes you just have to water, so we kind of fight back and forth with what we want to do. But some days we just have to start tea times a little later knowing that we're going to have some frost. So. 
Um, frosty weather. Air temperature alone cannot be used to predict frost. For frost to form, air temperature and leaf temperature must fall into the frost plane. Which, you know, like I said, it's not always 32 degrees or below. It can, what we usually look at is about 40 degrees. If it's 40 degrees or below, there's probably going to be frost. Because, just because the temperature diversions in different areas there to take it. And also, too, you can go all night and you clear. Right when the sun comes up, the temperature drops just a few degrees, and you can have frost form right as the sun rises in the morning. So sometimes you can show up and it's going to be dark out and perfectly fine if we're having to call our crew off the course, especially in the fall when you know we're so used to going right away, and just like that, there's frost just at that little bit of dip in temperature in the morning when the sun coming up. Yeah, the sun temperature, the sun will push that cold air down, right? right to the grass and then we get the frost. So um, same thing, the dew point compression is different between the dew point and the air temperature. The greater the compression, the more cooling is needed for frost to form. So that's just kind of, you know, one of those things where it's just the, the balance of in between of how it's gonna form that day. So different weather and environmental factors affect the amount of cooling at night. So I think the next slide will show, yeah, some of the other factors. So I don't know if you wanna go ahead or? Yeah. So one of the first factor is sky cover, so clouds. So if it's cloudy out, there's a good chance there won't be frost, just because the clouds act like a blanket and keep that overnight temperature up <clears throat> to sustain that air temperature through the night, and also we minimize the temperature difference between the surface and, and space, which slows the cooling at night. So if we have most frost nights come on cool, clear nights, outside where we know we have a cloudy night we have a good chance of no frost in this one. Uh, next would be the dew point so the air temperature where the air is completely saturated with water vapor so we have a increase in humidity it's again more better chance of being a frosty morning. Daylight so longer night period may have allowed for the air to continue to cool and the frost point. Frost would likely form on that cold, clear, calm night. So more chances to be cool, more better chance for frost in that point. So we take all these, and there's some more on the next page, but we'll take all of this in consideration with key times, tournaments, whatever. Who knows something's happening like that. Something's happening or we're needing to water or we're be a really cool, clear night, you can kind of take a guess and help, you know, plan for those times where there may be a little bit of a delay in the next morning. Yeah, that's why we, you know, bump the tea times back, especially for daylight, but it's also because of frost, you know, as we start to move forward this time of the year, it starts to get earlier and earlier, and we play golf sooner and sooner. Go. So, wind. So kind of like the cloud cover, wind will help prevent the frost even at the air moving, <clears throat> keeping the cool air or the warm air down and the cool air up to, so it doesn't keep down to the grass. In topography, so the lower areas will be the first to develop frost as the cooler, more dense air settles in the areas. So this one is a good one if you golf very much at sunset. You'll notice that it could be perfectly fine up on the number one key at the clubhouse, but we're waiting on frost because down on number one green, being down lower, there's frost down there. So it just shows how much just a little bit of change in the elevation of the area can create the frost. And also, uh, morning height, uh, frost forms heavier in the higher low turf. This happens because the fairway turf is closer to the warm soil, which it radiate, it, which is radiating heat upwards. So the longer grass blades helped keep in the cool up at the top. The cooler ones will allow the warm air to come up through and be a lot less frost in the rough areas of the golf course. The roughs are usually what he slows everybody down because greens usually don't get frost unless it's really cold. It has to be really cold where you want it at night, but the roughs they'll get it at, at 40 to 32 degrees almost guaranteed. 
So, yeah. go for it. All right, so the frost in the morning, you know, even though the sun's rising in the air, the air temperature continued to decline. That's what I was talking about, which it, it pushes the cold air down, and that's what causes our frost right as the right as the sun's coming up. That's usually the time that we know we're gonna get frost, and that's like the coldest time of the day, too, is right about there. So so even though the temperature is 40, the air is a poor conductor of heat, and the frost will will be slow to melt into dew, which you know then we can play. But it's the whole thing of the cold air staying lower, so. It also takes additional energy to change ice back to water, increasing the time that it's that the frost stays around. You know, so kind of kind of basic science there. You know, so we we try to base it as soon as we can. So yeah, that's what keeps it around. Yeah, that's a good picture. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so basically, this last slide here kind of sums it all up and gives an explanation of why we have frost delays and why we want to keep the golfers off the grass. So basically walking on or driving on frost cover causes the plant to break and cell walls to rupture. So basically the frost, all that moisture inside that leaf blade, once someone steps on it, when it gets frosty, it freezes. And when it gets stepped on, it explodes and damages the inside of that, the cells of that plant. So the cells will lose the ability to function normally and then damage can be seen within 48 to 70, 72 hours later after the plant leaves turn brown and die. So this picture down here is a good example that I found good. So this is one I just found offline. So this is not a, not a real world scenario from here, but all these brown marks around here in this green, that's all frost damage. So that can be seen in the leafing of the turf and making it more susceptible to disease and weeds. So basically these areas here, the grass blades have died and will stay like that until they can grow back. So when it happens in the frost, it could be all through the winter that this damage stays through. But in the spring, it would peel back a little more. And if you see someone where it happens right that day, you'll see these footprints with these black spots on the grass, and this is what happens in that 48 to 72 hours afterwards. Can you do anything to stimulate that grow back if you have the damage? It's pretty much the damage is there, and all the growth back would be coming up from the plants down below or around them. So mm -hmm. it all can be no, you just gotta wait back. for it to grow up and mow it off. I in mean, you can get up there and help it out. In the spring, it won't be as noticeable because we're in the growing season and it'll come back quick. But in the fall, I was, I'm guessing from this picture with the way it looks in the back, this is probably in the fall because everything's going dormant. So eventually, this will be lessened when the green goes more dormant, but you'll see it again in the spring and then the plant <coughs> will just have to grow itself back once the ones around it get healthy. Question. Yes. Yeah, so you've got all these golfers around, now you get on the course. How do you make your decision if the frost is going on? Yeah. So basically, you can do the step test or you kind of wipe the plant blade. So basically, when the frost is there, if you step down or press on the plant, it'll stay pushed down. And we're looking for the plant to spring back, which means that the cells, the moisture inside of the cells are starting to thaw out and the grass blade will pop back. Or another way to see it is if you take your hand and wipe it across the frost. If you wipe it and it still looks like icicles, then you still have a ways, but once it starts to melt, or if you ever hear someone at the clubhouse say the frost is starting to loosen up, you go and take your hand across it and you'll see it like you're kind of wiping the frost off your windshield when it warms up in the morning. So it's basically you're looking for that plant to bounce back and you put in way door um, action on it. Well, I always give it a little bit longer than, <clears throat> than we should because it, it, the deeper down it gets, you can't really tell if it gets deep down into like the root of the plant down there and then you can still have that damage and you might not be able to see it. So we always like to just give it a few extra, you know, maybe 10 extra 10 minutes or something like that it really helps out. So 
sounds like a great question for us all the same time. I plead my ignorance. I, I, did, I did not know this when I saw your presentation. So I, I thought it was something completely new. I thought it was just a game. It's my ignorance. Um, so, you know, I mean, now that I know this, we can help keep my letting others know. Because most of the time, people just stand around complaining because it's a boss away. And, and they don't really, they don't really know what it is. Yeah, these guys have heard every every so scene. The pros get to hear. Really, they do that. Slide right there is pretty definitive. It tells you what creates the graph, so maybe we can put that. Yeah. Up. And my real question: How many of them do we have? I mean, I don't play every morning. How many what? How many frost waves do we have? I mean, a lot. It's yeah. it's, yeah. it's almost yeah. daily. The sunset. It's it's. I was gonna say it's daily. Yeah, what's he gonna say? This time of year. year. No. It's usually mm -hmm. mid. I think this year was mid October. Mm -hmm. Mid October. Mm -hmm. Early October. That's when yeah. we start to really see it, and then it kind of lightens up in that March. We'll get to yeah, March. -ish. March. -ish. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'd yeah. say, yeah. yeah. I think some of the things are really close to the whole lot of the problems and the ones that are close. And the trees don't help us yeah. either. Right. 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 The trees, the trees, the trees are not good. Because that slide right there is pretty informative for any golf player. Like myself, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. for <laughs> definitely a sunset, it. it it's more rough, I guess you'd say, because the south side, three through eight, it could be clear as all can be, and it's only number two that's holding this up because it faces to the north this time of year. And the trees. Don't and the trees yeah. don't help it because it's blocking more of the sunlight and it takes a lot longer, and it really it really hinders us some days, but what do you do? So have you ever thought about <clears throat> like putting that into a laminated piece and on top so it's just sitting right there or something? <laughs> It's not a bad idea, yeah, you know. It, it's pretty important. The, the article that Dan used was a published one that we could, it's included in all the um, board packets, so it's, I think the picture show, shows everything. That yeah, could, yeah, I mean, just that whole slide could be, yeah. you know, just set on the counter, you know, everybody has those little placards that we could use. But now I have no idea. <laughs> and you've been playing golf forever, right? Yeah, for a long time. <laughs> well, probably I thought the green was <laughs> it's usually not the green, you know. That's why we can kind of get out there before. That's why you'll see us get out first, because we can get out and mow the green while the fairways and roughs are still. Well, the, the other piece, I, I can speak from you know uh, experience too. We have no idea when it's going to stop or whenever the delay will get to it. Yeah. Know what that might be. <laughs> it all happens. It's all around that, like Dan mentioned a few slides back, that 40 degree mark. Once we get 40, Everything starts to melt off, but sometimes we get there, we're crested right about 40, then a cloud bank comes in. And it kind oh, of yeah. slows it off. This is a different question. There's a group of people that play pretty much the most of the time. So they wear this, you can take grief from them all the time. They, they know, right? They, know. Some, they get it, they get it now. Yeah. The vast majority of golfers now in the mornings, yeah. just, they understand. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they just, they so come, they've right. come to just accept it. Uh, the guys have been real good at about letting letting like the range be open. Yeah. So they go out, people go out and ball. That at least keeps them occupied. And, uh -huh. and then once it's finally once it's finally off, we send it. But most people really do understand. If you play in the mornings, yeah. they know. The they're pretty good about this time because we're so used to starting early in the mm -hmm. summer. But all of a sudden we hit that weather changes. All of a sudden you can't golf. Right. First thing in the morning. And, and I, from my experience, some are warmer than others too. Like, right. yeah. a lot of us. Clouds yeah. are good. Clouds are good if we get them at night. Yeah. But if a cloud rolls in right after the sun puts that frost down there, then it could be. Who knows? <laughs> I think I was here, and I don't think we started the one. Oh yeah. Oh, I, we've had oh, days out when it went open up when one of those layer clouds comes in. Uh -oh. Just exactly what they just described, and and then it didn't warm up that day, <coughs> and we actually never opened. Oh my God. There's been days where we didn't open at all because frost stayed on all day. It never got above 30 degrees all day. And then the cloud, the cloud actually didn't work as a blanket this time. No, it, it worked to keep that cold air in. Especially if you so. watered that night or two, and you're thinking, yeah. oh, it's, <laughs> it's going to come up, and then it yeah. doesn't. And then you're okay. Well, we might be shut down today. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is a great article. It was written by. Uh, he used to be a professor at Nebraska, and now he's the superintendent and just does a ton of stuff for disc golf. Um, but yeah, really good article. Glad I found it that day. And it, it, I, I learned a lot from this article too. I mean, I knew the idea of it, but the science behind it was, was right here. So that was great. Anything else? Any other questions?
Yes. Well done. Thank you very much. All right, next reorder. Board back to uh, the agenda item two. Yes. Board chair. I'll be in the crate for Sam. Um, I mean, I'll probably add everything that he said. So, um, Twin Peaks is just like Sunset. You know, some guy accidentally booked in uh, in 2022 there, and that's how we made that thirty-four dollars. We didn't even uh, get that refund <laughs> to us. Yeah. So, anyway, it's the same thing. We were closed both months. We did get open yesterday, which was nice. I sold a couple season passes last week, so we're having a smoke in February right now. Compared to last year, which we made absolutely zero. So we did get a few rounds in today, a few rounds yesterday. Walking only out there. It's it's uh, drying up now. I think we can get carts on. We're pretty much 
and beat all the moisture out of it today. Uh, of course, it's, uh, I, I'm pleased because starting the year, you know, last year I looked out the window at the putting green, and you could tell where every hole on the putting green was, okay? Because of all the wear and tear we got last November of 21 and December of 21, we were open all the way until we had the fire in, uh, the Marshall fire, yeah. So we were open all that time, basically, and had, you know, a record-breaking fall, record-breaking November, December. But the golf course just got absolutely demolished. And it, it got to the place where we talked about taking people and not having to play, just closing. It's, so now, if you look out at the putting green, you can't see where one hole is, because the grass has basically been preserved. We had fairly limited play in November and very limited play in December and none in January, February. So, you know, with all the hard work Ryan's doing, uh, I think the golf course is gonna come out of the, the uh, winter months really good. And I think Ute Creek, Ute Creek is on the verge of doing cart path only in the fall. Uh, and their report is the same thing. They did nothing the last two months except the last two days. Um, they were on the verge of doing cart path only in the fall. And I think that email even went out. It did. And that, of course, inspired the snow to come. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and, and we went cart path after that. So, um, you know, now, we, now now they're back open and cart path only, which is good to get started. Yeah. We don't have a lot of growth yet in the grass. Although it is, if you look close, you can see green grass. Coming There's up green under there, one side of stuff. And the trees are pollinating. Who's out of the pollinating? It's already started. So, we're looking forward to it. The golf course is hard, and that they're going to come out of the winter much better than we did last year. It's going to be a much better spring. You know, the only problem might be once we get out there, we might find a little damage. And Ryan and Dan can explain this better. A little damage from from the ice layer is that that initial snow was what took so long to get rid of. It was so wet, and then it got so cold after that we had two three inches of ice for the longest time. You know, freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw, and that's not good at some point with the grass because it's not getting oxygen, it's not getting enough light. So, hopefully, we don't have a lot of those spots, but I'm sure yeah. there's going to be some of those spots. We're good. I drove the course today and looked at all the greens, and we don't have any damage from the ice, but it it, it makes you not sleep too too well, and you know it's up, and that's why we got out in late January, maybe early February, and pushed as much snow off as we could snowblowers, tractors to get to help it thaw out faster. So we got it down to that ice layer and then that helps move it or thaw out, you know, so. Because then you so, really only need one good, yeah. one good 60 degree day with wind, wind and that ice layer will go yeah, just like that. But it needs to be, it doesn't, if there's three, four inches of snow on top of that layer, you can't, it won't, it won't come off fast enough. So and then it freezes again. I played you Creek today and the greens are the fall sweet. Yeah, I will say I was surprised. I pushed a, a flag five inches into the ground out there, so it, it really soft, really thought out. Yeah, it's so good. it is good. But hopefully, people yeah. are fixing up Walmart. No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't need to start Walmart in February. I think people with computer just know what the weather are right now. So exactly. It's the same thing after verification. Oh, you're just here to find out if you fixed up Walmart, you know? So it's like, yeah, you do. Like that played today, and it's like, yeah, this is Walmart. Yeah. Like I said earlier, 12 greens, the geese just, they just attack that thing so bad and they peck, peck, peck and dig it down past the roots of the plant. So um, we have a new plan for that next next year. And, and to that end, about all three golf courses, the geese are a legitimate issue. Yeah. We have probably 200 that stay <coughs> year round just in front of geese. And when you're out playing and you see a, and you see a green, First of all, you see a green and they, they've gone to the restroom all over the grass. That's not fun. But you'll see holes like this where they will just stay in one spot and go and just and literally take a hole out like that big or bigger in the greens. That's what those are. Those are those are the geese taking those up. So um, they are a legitimate problem. It'd be great if, if someone could figure out what we can do about it. It's a tough one. Oh, yeah. Front our well, I even tear it Goose crap everywhere. I got a pretty goose run in my house today. I mean, that only two parts of it. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, how, did, how did you do last year? Like, um, Twin Peaks had a record year of 1.307 million. And then we were pretty bad at the year. I know Sam had a uh, 1.8. 
1.9 million we were, we were at two weeks short of hitting the new magic number. Okay, yeah. So we hit our magic number and we were fairly lucky at Twin Peaks. We hit our magic number, but we actually, because of um, that that fall where we didn't have a good December and, and January, or December and November, and October wasn't that great either, y'all remember. It was a very great October. Um, our rounds were down just in those months, just in the shoulder season months, that's where we lost a lot of the rounds. But because we had adjusted our fees last year dynamically upwards, we still made we still made our numbers and then some over over prior year, which was a record year that year. So that's six oh six. Anything else? No, nothing to be sort of Yeah. Is that form easier for everybody to Read with the lines. And, <coughs> yeah, I like the new form. Yeah. So yeah. thank you to Danny for doing that. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. 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 Ye
point-of-sale software um, and as customers if you hear about it someone's trying to check in and it's taken a little longer than normal we have the same software since not 2009 so this is not the same it is much different it is going to take some time for everyone to get comfortable and used to it and uh, no matter how much we train them the training on the fly is what's going to be what costs everyone to learn how to run it um, you know, so when you check in, John, when you check in, look out and say, hi, my name is John. Okay. You make a tea time, give them your first name and your last name because we're typing it in. We got to look it up and then we got then we can make the tea time from there. It's, it, it, I think once everybody gets it, it's going to be really good. The computer's finally taught to all three golf courses. So the Philippi's pass at sunset, yeah. that pass is now going to populate as a, the Sunset Twin Peaks or three course pass for all three courses, that is great. So there's a lot of really good in it, but there's going to be, we literally, I'm on day two with it. Brian and I were talking before the meeting about how are we going to report these things and this and that and everything else. So we're, we're figuring it all out and just kind of bear with our staff. <coughs> but people you hear people talking about it, you know, it's, it's a big learning curve. When so it went into place just a couple days ago. It, uh, the, the actual installation was last Tuesday. It went live, I think. Uh, it went live uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. I, I could look at it online, and it's it's a cloud-based system. So Sam, Keith, and I can actually adjust something if we're off. If I'm off on a day and I don't I don't want to travel to the golf course, you know, in fact, you can I can so I can log in. in. And I can change the exactly. I can yeah. fix it yesterday. Company. But it's uh, it is a, it, <laughs> I don't know if I fit my comments because I have to do the meeting myself in the meeting today. But it's kind of it's it's definitely a learning curve. I mean, for me, and I I've, I've no so with always it, it's it's especially it's the fact that we aren't using it a lot oh, yeah. because and, and and that's, it open. And that's going to be problem. and that's going to be the thing is like you said, we're learning on the fly, mm -hmm. and we won't be able to learn on the fly until you guys are coming in. Right. Wow. I haven't had anybody check in for a tea time yet. Yeah. I, will, I will find out tomorrow how easy, complicated, or frustrating yeah. it could be. But it's gonna be, it's the way it, it's the way it yes. is. After, we know if we learn, we move on. Yeah. After two days, I feel a lot better. Um, but I didn't sleep very good the last two days. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's, 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 you know, and then I gotta get everyone trained. And I only got, you know, most of my guys that work for me um, are y'all's age. And uh, <laughs> I for what it is. <laughs> um, I got, I got, I, I, I brought my young, I got, I got one young kid that works for me. He's 21. Oh my goodness. And then I showed him all the, all the modules and I'm like, learn all those and then teach me. <laughs> and he will. He's like, within five minutes, he goes, okay, here's how you do this, and here's how you do that. And I'm, you know, learning, you know, because they, 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 they've grown up in it. A lot of us, if you get older, have not, and it's way different. Yeah. Why do you have a driving range up there? Where? Why do you have a driving range up there? Why? Why are your golf courses off a driving range? Why? That was a question. Oh, for practice. To get better, right? get better. Right. Right. what's the equivalent of your driving range? <laughs> Is there what? The, well, they have they have a training mode, but it's not. I'm not going to say I love the training mode. So they don't have. And, they don't and the training mode tends training. to slip in and out of live mode. So yeah, and, <laughs> oh, anything you do in training mode, you have to go back and oh, void it out. Right. Otherwise, it will process so the next day. That may be some feedback to whoever sells. Oh, stuff. it's already been given. Yes, we've already. Yeah. yeah. So to answer your question, uh, Councilman, the, the training mode is is key. Not out there on the lesson key right now, but hovering over someone's shoulder, patiently walking them through this process of learning the software. Um, and that's why it was really nice today when Carter came in. I showed him one time. This is how it works. This is what we do. Okay. Guys, you got it? Yeah, I got it. 
I go in the little bill later and I look in the background to see if he's doing everything. So, yeah. so. well, you know, I, I buy the manual pass and I buy the sunset that's over here. We don't have it. Mm -hmm. We don't buy it here. We don't have sunset. And then they ask me, yeah. and of course I tell them I'm a lot. I'm a lot of person. But I thought to myself, geez. Yeah. What if, I, what if I wanted to go and stay a couple months or something like that? How would you do that? What? So the old system too, we had a lot of change <clears throat> names. So you could have been under John Hay, John there's, Hayes, there's, John Hay, a different one. Multiple, there's multiple John yeah. Hayes on there. Golf yeah. Now cleaned all that yeah. up for us. We cleaned up our data. Everything is, uh, if I type in John Hay right now, they should only have one person. Even if I go in to create a new you, because I don't know who you are, say, and you didn't know you were in there, it will it'll pop up saying they already have this. You have to put an email or a phone number associated with it, and it won't let you do the nine 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 nines or sevens. So you well, have to put. Well, yeah, this will replace that. Exactly. And it's worse. It's worse than that. The old software, if John has his pass and then he he signs into the portal online and he books a tea time online. It changed his pro. It'll change yeah. the old software. It would change his profile from a Pass Twin Peaks five day pass holder to an internet customer. Right. So then he comes in, and so instead of us just clicking, double clicking his name and having it populate the key sheet with his pass rate, it populates it with the full rate. Well, the guy behind the counter doesn't know what's going. You know. So this now it's really nice from that standpoint. If you have a membership now. It comes up right underneath your name, member. I go to the shopping cart. It puts the fee for that moment right there in there, and it's it's seamless. Let me ask you this: um, I call in, and you're busy, so I get transferred to the answer, the answer center. The answer center. So what happens then? It's just you would uh, book the tea time still with them. It, okay. be a, your name would still populate because they're still pulling our database. If, oh, if anything is our database. If anything. Out. If anything, it should make this easier. Because if, if I were, if I walked over and showed you right now, I can make a tea time off. Other than typing up your name, I can click two clicks and the tea time's made. Uh -huh. So so those folks who are booking the tea times that are off site when we don't get our pro shops, that are answering 24 hours a day, that are off site somewhere else, they should have a much easier time because there are less duplicates and there are less click throughs with this software. So that that should make Golf Now Answers much better. And I would agree it was awful last year and I filed every complaint we could. And then they put their best people and that didn't help our team. So but I do think it'll help. So that was I just wanted to explain that. So if you hear people talking about it, you know, I'm trying to train right now, I'm trying to educate the customers. Because they're so used to just coming in and us, you know. Pretty much making it really easy for them because we know everybody, and and now it's gonna there's, there's some relearning going on with the customers. Even though you think we know, give us your first name, give us your last name, spell it correctly because if it isn't spelled correctly, okay, and then and then if Chuck Davis is working, I say mind you he can't hear. So there's a, there's it's important to make sure that the customers know that if they give us the right information, we can get it through there much quicker. Is there any benefit to stop out other courses and just check and say, hey, can I check to verify my profile? Sure, program? absolutely. And then we'll be absolutely. You only got to stop by one course to do that. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So that was it. That was my only item from staff. Good information. Um, any items from the church or anything? No. Oh. Any items from the world? <laughs> So I have four things that I think I forgot to bring. One, uh, <laughs> I was at the Golf Expo and talking to the, uh, the people from the CGA, the Colorado Golf Association. And I didn't, I wasn't aware of this, but when you have a CGA membership and you go in and fill it out, it asks you what course is yours. So I chose a virtual course of the three because I think we play that the most. And apparently you get fees for that, you get something from them for that, what's the result? From the CGA, of course, you do. If, if a player has chosen them as their home course, I don't think we get anything in a sense. It just goes into our list of uh, members. We actually have to pay. Yeah, we have to pay for them. Yeah, 
We, we pay to be members of that whole system. Yeah, the CGA. That's how we <clears throat> Yeah, no. So if you if you don't mind, what I what I what I've been told all the time is you just go on, on Jen's website and sign up to be have Jen Hamlin. And you have to select a home course. Right. You select you create, for instance. You are in their database. So when whoever the president is over there, right now, of their men's club goes to do a or the treasurer or goes to renew the membership, they will either delete everybody and just have everyone start over and you guys will have to pay them directly, or you will automatically be renewed and you'll have to pay sense like that's not how we, we don't auto renew anybody yeah i get i get to see that check yeah <laughs> we don't <laughs> well, I, 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 <coughs> we did the twin well, club sunsets <laughs> sunsets men our uh, our treasurer he gets an invoice from the cga <clears throat> saying well you had 133 men's club or had 133 members in your gin profile here's an invoice that you owe us for 133 members at Twenty-five dollars or thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars per shoes, and so he'll audit his books and say, "No, we only have X number of members right now. This is how many we're paying you for right now because nobody else is paying us." And those that didn't pay by April fifteenth become deactivated, and you have to reactivate. All right. Uh, this next one that I have is I don't know if this is who this is for, but the uh, stadium money. What the city's doing with that? That's probably me. That'd be you. So, any uh, coming our way? I was thinking more of Keith and his junior program, but uh, still, it's unallocated as far as I know. It's, <laughs> okay, Derek, I can't. I wish I could tell you. Uh, what, how, what process, if there's going to be one, uh, and what the priorities would be. So, the answer to your question is I don't know. I know, Derek. Yeah. That's pretty much what they already said. <clears throat> I just I've heard that uh, sometimes the money gets allocated. I don't know if it's money and they allocated it to, uh, I think I think it was, uh, cricket. Well, so if there's a way that, you know, maybe easy. some of the courses could apply for some of the junior programs or something. I don't know if that's, I don't know when the city will make a decision about it. Well, it won't be the that's city, it'll be the city council. The city council. Uh, I'll just tell my own, my own view on this is that it's one time money. Yeah. Uh, it's best spent on, I, I, I would support spending it on the Ukraine Plaza housing area. Yeah. Anything that endures. In my view, to put money, one-time money in the program, but once it's spent, it's gone and there's nothing that endures uh, beyond today or tomorrow is not a good use of one-time money, in my opinion. That's all. I like that. That's a good one. My program is good. Anything else? I've got one more. So, you know, the, the thing about the policy money, any, any chance we would promote that via our social media cardinal course? Yeah, you could I mean, that. More of the, the people, final slide. a lot of people who do play here are, uh, you know, joined the Facebook pages and social media, and they would certainly love to see. Yeah. Yeah, I got a few other ones too that new signs that are going to come out this year about using the range the right way and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, we can get it over again. Yeah. You take care of all of that work. Typo like that's fine. No, no. It's important. The problem is the last one. I don't know. I don't know. The second item, you have loose instead of lose. No. Well, someone dropped it on me on Friday. I'm just saying before you print up your stuff, do your key right one correct. I told you we're not the smartest guys, we're just good rats. <laughs> <laughs> Any other items? You're more cards. You're looking for the board. <laughs> Look for a gun. Uh, no, we just say, uh, in case you want to get a hold of me, uh, my phone number is 303. No, don't do not do that with the public. Oh, yeah. Can't be, you're being recorded. We have your number. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in that case, is there a minute to adjourn? Members <laughs> 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 say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Can you have a second to extra? Oh.